The anti-racism industry. According to the Washington Post, big business pledged $50 billion following the death of George Floyd. Business pledged $50 billion to social justice causes, anti-racism causes. Now, I don't know how much the anti-racism industry is worth, and if you Google it, you won't find any answers. As far as Google is concerned, nobody, nobody on this planet has ever asked that question. But I'll ask it. Certainly, it is a billion dollar industry, no question. And this is an in industry that is concentrated in Europe and the United States, in the West. In Ireland, it is certainly a multi-million dollar industry. Now, it used to be the case that if somebody was promoting, let's say, a particular cause, it used to be the case for most of my life, anyone promoting a cause, the very first question you would ask is, is this person making money out of this cause? Is there a vested interest here? This would be a standard thing, anyone promoting anything, you'd immediately, just to get it out of the way, is there money involved here? Is somebody making a profit out of this? Etc. Now, it's interesting that when anti-racists, professional anti-racists, who got paid massive salaries, it is interesting that when these people are interviewed on radio, or television or elsewhere, they never ever declare their interests. And their interest, their financial interest, is never mentioned. You will never hear, let's say, someone on radio say, well, our guest is so-and-so, so-and-so from the, what is it, the Irish Network Against Racism, and he is earning 80,000 a year. You'll never hear a person being introduced like that. There is no mention that these people we're interviewing are earning very good salaries. None. There is no questioning of how much this business is worth and exactly where the money is going and exactly how much money is involved. None. Now this, well, it should be extraordinary, but it's not. And all of this raises the very obvious question which is never, of course, raised by the media. And that is, who benefits from racism in Ireland? Well, we know that anti-racists, they benefit a lot fighting racism. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of people in Ireland whose job is to fight racism. And they get paid. Some of them get paid obscene amounts of money. Some of them earn very good salaries. But there are a lot of people and they're earning a lot of money. Now, excuse me. But there is never, <coughs> oh dear, <coughs> There is never any mention <coughs> of the money. None. <coughs> Excuse me. As usual, my mind is wandering and I've forgotten what I was going to say. But yes, there's never any mention, there's never any mention of a financial interest in any of this. None. You know, this is one of the biggest industries in Ireland now. Yet, we never hear anything about the finances. But, to get back to that central question, who benefits? Who benefits from this whole racist gig? 
who benefits from this whole narrative of a far right? Who's making them money? Well, it's the anti-racists. It's the multiculturalists. It's the people who believe in diversity and inclusion. They're making money. They're making a lot of money. Now, if you take someone like me, I would be considered far right. And many people, in fact, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, if they knew me, would insist I was racist. What financial benefit do I have in racism? In racism or anti-racism? In this whole thing of racism, what do I benefit? Well, I don't benefit at all. Now, I'm an old man and I'm retired, but if I was a young man and I had a good job, I might well lose my job because I was perceived as a racist. So there is no financial benefit to some like me, and there is the possibility of real financial damage. There is no reputation of value, let's say, to me. If I criticise mass immigration, I don't benefit financially. I don't enhance my image in front of society, quite the opposite. There is no benefit to me. None. Now, when you look at an anti-racist, you can see clearly, immediately, there are benefits. Financial, there are also benefits where people can present themselves. You know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people in Ireland will present themselves quite openly as progressive, tolerant, and inclusive, without ever having done anything to deserve any of this. People will virtue signal outrageously. People will tell you, look at me, I'm wonderful, without ever, ever, ever having sacrificed anything for any cause in their entire lives. So here you have this simple fact. The only people who benefit from racism are the anti-racists. They are the only people who make a financial benefit and, a, if you like, a reputational benefit. Racists? What have they got to gain? Money? No. Political power? No. If you want to gain political power in Ireland or England in the West generally, the anti-racism ticket is not, the anti, let's say, immigrant ticket, it's not popular. It's very unpopular. You want to commit political suicide, well, stand up and start talking about immigration. So there is no profit whatsoever for far-right people, people who are perceived as far-right, people who are accused of being far-right and racist. They have nothing to gain. I have nothing to gain. Financially, I have nothing to gain. I have nothing to gain with regard to my reputation, enhancing my reputation. Just something worth thinking about. But, uh, Yes, the anti-racism industry, hundreds of millions certainly is worth and earned. People are making colossal amounts of money. People are building political careers. People are shutting down people like me by using that word racist. Racist is an homophobe, homophobe. We have an entire shut up language. And the people who use this language, they're making a fortune out of it. They're making a lot of money. And none of these people are declaring their interest. None. And the people who report on this studiously avoid referring to the very obvious financial interests 
that most of these anti-racist people have.